Well, hello there and welcome to the kitchen of the dollhouse. And what are we cooking up today, my friends? Well, another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Hughes Elfers for March 12th, the day of the Great Leap. That's right. And here at the top of the page is a visual representational image of the day of the Great Leap. Well, we have us what appears to be a fedora with a ladder uh, curving from the brim to the crown. That's right. Now, does that speak to the day of the Great Leap? Hey, who's to say? Maybe to some of you. I can't quite make heads or tails of it. That said, uh, not altogether all too important, the visual representational image. I just like folks to know what's kind of going on on a page there in front of me. So you're part of the paradigm going on off screen. That said, what is important is it's March 12th, and hence, it's somebody's birthday. So if your birthday's March 12th, I just want to say, Happy birthday. That's what's important around here. If you take nothing else, that's what's important. Uh, that said, if this video finds you late, well, I hope you had a happy birthday in that circumstance. But for everybody else joining us randomly or more ideally to celebrate, I just want to say hello, welcome, and I hope you enjoy yourself. Now, before I dive in with the redirect, something I like to do around these here parts is roll some dice. That's right. This is the diecast birthday broadcast, so I like to live up to the namesake. But if you've been here before and that doesn't interest you, well, just skip ahead in the chapters there and get into the redirect. I'll be here rolling dice because more importantly, I do so for synchronicity's sake. And here I rolled us a five and a two for a seven. Now, what is synchronicity? You're probably wondering. Well, my friends, as I hear it told, the universe or the higher powers that be, if you like, will oftentimes put things in our path to help us manifest our goals and realize our aspirations. But a lot of times we got the blinders on to kind of what's going on around us. To say we don't necessarily lend a lot of credence to what may happen to present into our path. That said, this is a little bit of an exercise to help us start taking those blinders off and identifying the things the universe is putting in our path. But we need a kind of sign between us and the universe to help us realize as much. Something we can't help but notice, hopefully. That's right, your daily numbers. So uh, what does this whole thing got to, got to do with finding out universal things? Well, let me tell you something here. This is just to help you uh, describe uh, directional values to number sets as well as time limits with which to go in those directions if this is something you want to try out. Uh, I don't have to go with the numbers that I rolled for you. The intention's there, but you know what? It's advisable to get your own set of dice. And then pick out some place maybe near and dear to your heart or some place you haven't explored before. But then once you get out there, like I said, get those blinders off, all right? You never know. The day might also start to take on a little bit of a theme. Take the visual representational image, for instance. Maybe you start seeing people wearing fedoras all over the place. So you know what? It's not often that that happens. Or maybe you see curved ladders, all right? I can't say I've seen one of those before. Or maybe things that are otherwise supposed to be straight that are curved. You never know. It also could be that you start seeing things not in a literal fashion, but figurative, if you like. Maybe uh, uh, stickers on the side of transformer boxes, knowing the random things that slap taggers get up to. Or perhaps an advertisement. Advertisement. Somebody's wearing a hat, you know what I mean? Or a mural on the side of a building. Who's to say? It, all I'm trying to say is it might start popping into your day. And so maybe take note of it. The universe trying to tell you you're on the right track. But it could be just about anything, all right? Not the visual representational image specifically. That said, maybe you're on this first directional value time limit. You're not seeing much of anything, all right? Just take it in stride. Get your steps in if you like and keep going. Or maybe take a moment to kind of compose yourself and look around. You might just happen to notice something small like you're on oh what's this 52nd avenue or maybe a 7th avenue all right another sign that you're on the right path so maybe you roll your dice and no sooner you do that oh maybe the old number seven bus pulls up and maybe there's an advertisement for your theme there on the side of it who's to say i would say that that's the perfect example of the universe talking to you all right and maybe you just so happen to have perfect change in your pocket to ride that said i'd get on there even if you don't like riding the bus get out of your comfort zone a little bit see what you see maybe you roll your dice for a time value to see when you can get off of this thing and no sooner do you look up and the number you rolled is on the back of somebody's sports jersey all right in these instances i like to say that's somebody to follow or maybe just get off the bus when they do maybe no sooner you get off the bus hey uh, you know what 
there's just a sea of blase looking people in their garments. They're otherwise uninteresting. But there just so happens to be one gentleman who's, I don't know, wearing a pink watch, say. You know what? I would say that's an interesting anomaly. Maybe follow them. See what they're where they're going, all right? It's kind of your white rabbit to uh, track down and follow. That said, don't be stalking individuals in these particular cases. You don't want to spook the rabbit if you like. But, you know what, as I often like to say when I bring up these examples, if you do get caught and they confront you, perhaps, hey, just explain what you're doing, be transparent. Uh, hey, here's my dice, here's this video of this clown who's trying to tell me to get out of here and shake up my birthday. And that, that individual's apt to say, that's just crazy. And you're apt to probably agree, I would say, but they might say, yeah, that's crazy too, but it's even crazier is it's my birthday as well. Oh, you know, and I, I use that example oftentimes because it seems harebrained, but it's well within the realm of possibility. And you never know, that, might, that individual might just be so apt to join you on your journey. And what's great about that is if more people get involved in this, you're apt to beget greater results, at least as I hear it. So in any event, get on out there, start stacking up some coincidences, some synchronicities if you like, and you're apt to see why I brought it up for you, all right? Have some fun out there and see some magic if you like. That said, I think you get the idea of synchronicity. Let's get on with the birthday read. That's why you're here. Your month is March. Your day is the 12th. Your sign is 20 to 22 degrees Pisces of the Pisces 3 period specifically. And your quality and element is mutable water. All right, March 12th, the day of the Great Leap. The courageous, determined individuals born on this day are tough enough to withstand the setbacks and disappointments of life and later make use of their seasoned experience. Struggle is no stranger to March 12 people who seem to thrive on overcoming obstacles of all kinds. They are somehow able to take whatever natural abilities they have been given and drive them to the limits. And not infrequently, they have a strong vision or concept of what kind of person they wish to be. However, it is important that March 12 people keep themselves directed, for they tend to be multi-talented and as such are vulnerable to scattering their energies. And those born on this day who find themselves carried away, first to the interest and then to that, uh, would do well to at least limit themselves to related fields within one industry or profession. And most March 12 people are undaunted by risky ventures and even leap into situations which most people avoid at all costs. And perhaps they believe that the greatest rewards are granted to those who have the faith to lay everything on the line. However, there is also no denying that danger in and of itself often attracts them, as does controversy. And they secretly enjoy being the subject of conversation, though they may deny it. Often March 12 people give the impression of wanting nothing better than to be left alone in their secretive, private world. That is, until they suddenly reveal themselves and what they are doing, and even flaunt it. And March 12 people usually believe in what lies beyond the here and now, in other worlds, other planes of existence, other realities. Yet the image they present is quite hard-headed and down to earth. And they have a way of combining the physical and the metaphysical, reve uh, revealing rather, or reveling, if you like, in the former, but being intelligent enough to ultimately put it in service of the latter. And somewhere in the back of their minds, they know that all of life is transitory. Whether they are religious or have strong spiritual leanings or not, they recognize that there are timeless principles and forms which stand behind this passing show. Hence, the more intellectual of March 12 people demonstrate a remarkable capacity to think on an abstract level. Certain enthusiastic March 12 people must be careful of getting carried away by their faith in unearthly happenings. And until they have developed a deep understanding of metaphysical and esoteric principles, they will tend to undermine their emotional stability if they overindulge in such thoughts. 
A simultaneous development of worldly and spiritual goals usually suits them better, enhancing their daily life and promoting the stability needed for metaphysical ruminations. Balance is the key to reducing the dangers associated with such leaps of thought and action. Well, all right. Quite the interesting birthday breakdown. I would say it was all over the place, if you like. A little scattered there. I even kind of scattered myself there a bit, trying to read a word I wasn't sure I had uh, pronounced correctly. Uh, that said, I often like to uh, provide a little bit of a commentary on what we just read, kind of rehash things for more context, also provide uh, little associations with the period at large, commonalities, if you like, also things that I found interesting. So let's dive into it, shall we? March 12th, the day of the Great Leap. You're said to be courageous and determined individuals, and you're purported to be able to weather the storms of life and continue on in your journey with uh, knowledge of how to better prepare for and or ride out such changes in the metaphoric environment there. Uh, so you're no stranger to struggle. Uh, the reading further claims that you strive to overcome obstacles and uh, in, in the benefits uh, you can derive uh, a lot of experience from such things all right uh, also taking uh, innate skills uh, that you possess and squeezing them for every ounce of merit that you can out of them uh, having said that the reading also claims that you have a strong image of who you wish to be but must stay directed at that image as you may scatter your attention amidst a myriad of talents and interests and I suppose that presupposes some form of defined success or an ideally realized focus. Uh, both of those are great suggestions, I would say, if you're success-oriented or looking for a specific purpose more aptly. Uh, but it's horrible advice, in my mind, uh, if you love chasing after any given metaphysical area of concern uh, or any metaphorical car that might so happen to come down the street, if you like, all right? Uh, maybe you just don't have aims and any spe uh, specific purpose. Some folks just like going out there and, you know, living life as it comes. So I would say just trying to drill down on one specific thing might not do you any favors in those regards, all right? That said, I endorse all three as it happens, but regardless, regardless of your aims, uh, reading claims that you may believe laying it all out on the line may bestow the greatest rewards, all right? Uh, so the prospect of being attached to danger is interestingly also brought up into the conversation. Uh, and I'd wager you may just be if everything mentioned about uh, overcoming obstacles and setbacks holds even partially true. All right. Ironically, much like uh, most others born in this particular period, an element of a secret personal world may factor into your life as well. Uh, the difference being is you're purported uh, to have a penchant to display it more so than other people would. Uh, there's also a commonality for synthesizing the metaphysical and the real, uh, though for you it's outright stated versus being simply hinted at with others, uh, which also extends uh, strong leanings in on the metaphysical to the point it may overtake more material matters uh, despite said groundings all right so again something hinted at previously with other people born in this particular period but more drilled down on you specifically uh, also with regards to warnings of getting too carried away with such ideas and cultivating a balance, all right, which is a watchword theme in the book at large. Also cultivating self-awareness and moderation. So, uh, you know what, uh, a lot of times we have to read between the lines to get those things, but oftentimes they're there if they're not outright stated. Uh, that having been said, that's what I'd say about your breakdown. So let's move on, maybe provide a little more context for the things they drill down on as we move on into your numbers and your planets. All right, here we go. Those born on the 12th of the month are ruled by the number three, as two plus one equals three, and by the expansive planet Jupiter. Those ruled by the number three tend to rise to the highest positions 
in their sphere. They also tend to be dictatorial, the reading says, and March 12 people should beware of this. And those ruled by the number three put a high premium on independence, which may necessitate some March 12 people giving up a secure position in order to freelance. And the Jupiterian energy uh, associated with the number three encourages March 12 people to follow their calling with enthusiasm. And the influence of Neptune, which is the ruler of Pisces, may indicate material fortune. All right. Pretty interesting. You know, not much was said about Neptune, surprisingly. And uh, the things that they did say about Jupiter, a little anomalous. All right. So might be burning down everything that I have to say in the notes. Let's dive into it, shall we? Uh, the number three in the expansive planet Jupiter for a drive to rise to the highest positions in your sphere, uh, but also a tendency to be dictatorial, all right? Uh, which, if memory serves, is not a common trait for Jupiter days. Uh, neither is a drive for independence and or danger, all right? Uh, usually it's simply an expansive philosophical outlook and seeking the most constructive approach to solving problems, as well as material luck and optimism. And that's without Neptune that the luck comes up, all right? Uh, which is all... Um, uh, all that to say, uh, this approach to danger is an anomaly. And by my mind, Neptune, which is the planet of dreams and visions, is probably to thank in no small part for that. Somehow shaking things up. or uh, And uh, a lot of times, the people that are ruled by Neptune, they have this focus on a higher ideal. Um, and a lot of romanticism is baked into the bargain. Uh, so for you, it's uniquely realized in this ex to this extent. Um, and uh, despite more, uh, some of the more periods, uh, commonalities that come up. Uh, those are certainly baked into it too, but for you, there's just a lot of interesting anomalies that keep popping up here. And also this higher ideal for you seems to be more individually focused. And uh, earlier in the period, it was a lot more focused on like a cause, commitment to a higher ideal for maybe serving others, not, not oneself. And we've kind of been transitioning out of that, it seems like. And certainly I would say that's true here for you. Uh, that said, uh, pretty par for the period in those respects, uh, even if in some kind of novel realization. Um, but pretty interesting that it shook up Jupiter the way it did. Uh, typically, such shakeups are generally on account of the planet Uranus, but that's not here today. Uh, Neptune tends to just give more a uh, higher ideal kind of focus, and certainly the metaphysical angle that popped up quite frequently for you here. Um, but this uh, love for thirst for danger in the bargain, that's something more, I would think, uh, akin to, say, a Mars day, hyper-aggression. And a lot of that seemed to be baked into the bargain here for you, too, a little bit. So it's quite an anomalous day in those respects. Uh, that having been said, that's what I'd say about uh, your numbers and your planets. So let's move on to your tarot. That's right. One of the more eclectic of the New Age metaphysical ideologies, even though it's not all that new. But that having been said, a lot of times you can make more associations with what was brought up in the breakdown and maybe just uh, further drill down on some such qualities there if you like that said sometimes they don't line up at all but, but we'll just have to find out won't we let's dive in the 12th card of the major arcana is the hanged man who dangles by his foot in a head down position and though such position seems helpless the hanged man is nevertheless spiritually powerful and deeply thoughtful and the positive attributes of this card are recognizing limitations and overcoming them. Ah, there we go. As well as simply being human. The negative aspects are spiritual myopia and restrictedness. All right. Total copy-paste job with this particular tarot card entry, which is pretty common, but sometimes they'll button it with a little bit of extra information there for you to make it more specific to the day. But I would say a lot of times there's a trade-off if they personalize the numbers and planets. And for you, I would say they did so because they had to with that danger element baked in there. 
Uh, that said, not altogether all too important. I just like folks to kind of see what's going on in the book here. Uh, that said, back to the notes here. The Hanged Man, dangerously positioned, yet still spiritually powerful and thoughtful. For a card on a rare occasion, seemingly representing an example to be mindful of something to strive for. And I would say that lines up nicely with their recommendation for you to focus on something uh, so you're not all scattered, if you like. Uh, with positives of recognizing limitations and overcoming them, or in your case, perhaps not acknowledging them, all right? Uh, you know, it might serve as an example of something to strive for, all right? Maybe be a little more focused, if you like, if that's something that you need in your life, and you're not the person that's chasing down the cars in the street in the metaphorical fashion there. Uh, but also simply being human, all right? And I would say that aspect speaks to you in regards to uh, the enjoyment that you might derive from showcasing your energy and your zest in that otherwise private world that you show people, all right? Um, at least that's what I would posit. Uh, but negatives of spiritual myopia and restrictedness. Uh, so I would say it's a very apt card. Um, and, uh, you know, that is if the breakdown applies. Uh, albeit there was this impression that you may lend a little bit uh, too much credence to the spiritual. Uh, so uh, otherwise, taking, uh, otherwise taking you from your earthly matters. Uh, so something to be mindful. Uh, that said, that seemed to be a little bit of a disconnect there with the spiritual myopia, kind of short-sighted in those regards. And I would say, based on the breakdown, you may lend a little too much credence to as much. So, very interesting. There seemed to be a little bit of a disconnect the way I read it. Uh, so, maybe I'm wrong in understanding myopia the wrong way, uh, but I don't think I am. In any event, hey, maybe it speaks to you regardless, uh, <laughs> the disconnect. That said, that's what I'd say about your tarot. Hopefully, we impart a little bit more value than was uh, just put in the book there. Uh, before we move on to your health. All right, let's get into it here. Those born on March 12 are often prone to psychological difficulties and emotional instability. And before their 20th year, they will be forced to examine their inner state, confront their problems, and do something about them. All right, therapy in their 20s or other forms of psychological counseling can be of great help to them. Uh, much Mar uh, March 12 people, rather, are capable of building a firm basis for their psychological help through experience. Uh, this is best done slowly, brick by brick. Uh, vigorous exercise is recommended for these powerful individuals, as well as sexual relations uh, with one mate, it says. Hopefully both loving and intense, it says, in parentheticals. Uh, as far as diet is concerned, March 12 people tend to just eat whatever and whenever they like, uh, which seems to work for them. Uh, but in cases of obesity or dietary restriction, it is difficult to bring these habits under control. All right, this is a very interesting health entry to be sure. And why do I say that? Well, let's get back into the notes here. Uh, you're prone to psychological and emotional instability, they said, and that they really hammer this point home. Uh, I mean, so maybe take note of as much, but I say that also is they probably haven't drilled down on the psychological this much in a health entry before. If they have, it's a, it's a close second, all right? Um, that said, uh, I would say this is just another challenge for you to try and overcome, especially because they brought it up that you take it slow, do it step by step, all right? It's just another challenge for you. Uh, vigorous exercise is recommended for all that energy they said you have. That weird anomalous uh, dynamic that's going on between the planets. That seems to be the association when we come down to these health entries and how they, they hammer home what kind of exercise you should uh, partake or incorporate into your life. Uh, what else we have here to say? Focusing on your sexual relations with one partner uh, is a rather common thing that comes up, but it's a, a rather rare entry, that being said. So when in the rare instances that sexual uh, uh, topic comes up, it's pretty common, they say, to find one particular individual. All right, probably for your psychological health, I would say. 
Uh, the diet, they said, is largely left up to your best judgment. That's even rarer, I would say, than even the sexual focus. And the sexual focus is probably presented this period more so than any other zodiac period. So it's not necessarily rare to hear mention of it, but if you take the whole book into account, it very seldom comes up. I think there was maybe one or two mentions of it before we got into Capricorn. So particularly interesting. Uh, what else did I to say? Now, uh, health is largely left up to your best judgment, but that being said, um, the uh, Pisces body areas are the uh, lymphatic system as well as the lower legs, feet, and toes. So I've been coming across the recommendation in the book that you avoid dairy because it builds up the mucus and you want that stuff free-flowing, all right? Also, the feet and toes was coming up with fluid retention and poor circulation in that respect. And none of this was mentioned for you, but maybe something to be mindful of. And how the uh, planets dictates your ability to retain water, uh, that's above my pay grade, but it's pretty interesting nonetheless. Uh, that having been said, like I said, it may not apply to you, but something to be mindful of. Uh, with, but with your health in the can, let's move on to some advice. That's right, it's your birthday, you get a little bit more advice. Advice, yeah. So here we go. Find a balance between your physical and your metaphysical sides, all right? And learn to trust more and share fully, all right? Put the past behind you and beware of sensationalism, all right? Learn to express the best part of yourself, but do not deny your weaknesses either and accept the whole package, all right? Very interesting. A little bit redundant in some respects. They're kind of drilling down on certain things, but you know what? Sometimes we need to hear it 38, 39 times before we cotton to as much or in different ways before we're finally like, oh, that makes sense to me now. Why didn't I think of it like that before? Anyhow, let's dive into what I had to say about what they had to say. All right. Uh, just bear with me. My writing's tiny because I had to put it in a book. So I might stumble and fumble my way through it. Let's get into it here. They said find balance with your physical and metaphysical side. Probably could have predicted this much, all right? Uh, a little redundant, like I said, but important, I would wager, or else why would they mention it, all right? And this is a pretty common theme through this particular period. Neptune coming in and shaking things up with that higher ideal, especially if your other ruling planet is a rather earthly or grounded planet. And Jupiter is, all right? Uh, what else do they say? Um, trust more fully share more fully or uh, learn to trust rather and share more fully uh, you may be quite focused on yourself believe it or not uh, so not a sin per se okay uh, but limiting in many ways i would i would argue uh, especially if you aren't sharing the less sensational part of yourself you're always on display a little bit of an exhibitionist uh, a lot of times they say to lower the walls or the uh, or the facade that you put on so people can get to know the real you. And uh, the uh, tarot thing was, uh, uh, I mentioned being human. That's part of being human is showing people what's behind the facade. Uh, a lot of times that came up for the Aquarius period here, as it turns out, also with Capricorn. Capricorn put up the walls and you never got to see the human sides. So tell them to break them down. Um, uh, what else do we have here? Uh, put the past behind and beware sensationalism. Again, a redundant little aspect there. Uh, express the best part of yourself, but uh, don't deny your weaknesses either, okay? Accept the whole package, they said. Huge advice, I would say, and uh, I don't really want to expand on it because uh, I basically say the same thing with every reading, all right? Uh, and we'll get to that here shortly when I incorporate that. I just find it funny that I absently anticipated this particular piece of advice months ago, all right? Uh, but this isn't about me. It's your birthday, so let's move on to your meditation that's right it's your birthday you get a meditation something to think about if you like all right here we go caution should not be mistaken for cowardice oh very interesting and i like this one for you they took a totally different deviate here nor there once again caution should not be mistaken for cowardice all right, your birthday, your meditation. I almost started expanding on it. I don't like to do that for the meditation. I like to leave it just for you, all right? Because it would kind of defeat the purpose of it being a meditation if I was to tell you what I thought about it, 
All right, so your birthday, your meditation. Uh, that said, your meditation in the can, as it were. Let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. That's right. Let's hold up the objective mirror and find out where you got the girth and where you otherwise maybe a little bit more atrophied within the metaphor. That's right. Your strengths and your weaknesses. Your strengths, your daring, your intense, and you're a visionary. That's right. But your weaknesses, oh, let's hold that objective mirror back up, but flip it to the side that blows up your face. Yeah, maybe it shows off the things you're otherwise a little more superficially insecure about within the metaphor. That's right. All right here we go. Your weaknesses. You're reckless. You're unstable. Ooh. And foolhardy. Interesting. You know, oftentimes I like to make the case that uh, our strengths can help us overcome our weaknesses if there's something that needs to be overcome. But I also like to make the argument that um, our weaknesses can also be strengths. It just depends on the situation, also the individual. A couple months back one day, uh, was it, uh, what was the word that came up? I want to say intense, but that wasn't it. I'm totally forgetting the copy here. But this one impulsive, I think is what it was. Impulsive came up as a strength, but the very next day it traded to a weakness. And I was thinking to myself, what's the disconnect here? It's just one day of separation. Minutes for some folks, but it's a weakness for them and a strength for these other individuals. And so it just got me thinking, it just depends on the situation and the individual, how it's used, all right? Uh, so that said, how do we overcome our weaknesses with our strengths? You're daring. Hey, you know what? You're going to see like the, this dangerous, perhaps, method of overcoming your, uh, your weaknesses. Maybe there's some danger involved. You're going to strive after it because you love the danger. Well, they didn't say it that way, but let's assume they did. You love the danger, all right? And you know what? You're going to come at it from an interesting way, especially if you're a visionary. That's right. You see it in your mind how to overcome it, even if there is said danger. You're also intense. Hey, that's why you love striving after the danger, I would say, all right? And you're going to do so in a very brash way, maybe. You know, bring out all the guns, if you like, to overcome your weaknesses. That said, with your weaknesses, how can they be strengths? Said you're reckless, or they define that out as uh, thinking of things without any kind of caution, if you like. All right, just running in through things, being otherwise intense. It's interesting how those things kind of dovetail together nicely. You know, I would say sometimes it's a strength because we're just going after it, all right? We're not thinking about all the things that might get in the way. Sometimes, you know, thought can just be totally stifling. It can get in the way, hinder us from uh, just promote inaction. Reckless, yeah, I can see where they're coming at it from because you're just you know, getting after it too much, too foolhardy, if you like, with it. I mean, that foolhardy good dovetails into that nicely as well. Uh, recklessly bold or rash, they said in the, in the definitions there as I looked them up. Uh, you know, the word reckless came up with foolhardy. So they're basically the same thing, I would say. But, you know, sometimes we have to throw caution to the wind to get the results we want. Because some people are just mired in inaction, indecisiveness. And uh, from the sounds of it, don't let that bog you down. All right. So I would say it's a strength in those regards. But again, we talked about balance. Uh, you know what? You got to find that balance. Sometimes that can get in your way because you might jump after something a little too dangerous and you know what? You're going to be laid up for months or you may be laid up in the grave. Who's to say? All right. What was the other one? You're unstable. Hey, how does unstable work as a strength? I often like to bring up the boardroom. You're in the middle of a contract, maybe dispute or negotiation. And yeah, maybe that intellectual IP of yours is so precious you don't want to let it go without getting top dollar for it or perhaps creative control. And you know what, some folks are trying to undercut you. you know, sometimes you gotta be a little unstable. Sometimes show them you're not screwing around. I heard tale that Tom Petty went into a, a record negotiation. He pulled a switchblade knife out of his boot and started cleaning his nails when he wasn't getting the terms he wanted. You know what? He got the terms he wanted. A little unstable, perhaps. Hey, you know what? He just needed to clean his nails. <laughs> Whether or not he cleaned up what he took from underneath those nails, that wasn't in the story, but you know what? I assume he left it behind. I don't know. A little uncouth, a little unprofessional, but you know what? He got the deal he wanted. That said, I can see it as a strength, but I understand why they're bringing it up. Unstable can be a bad look, too. It could have just as easily gone the other way, and they released him from the label. But I'm assuming maybe he wanted some of that, too. It would have been the best of both worlds, regardless where they landed. 
That said, I think you get the idea. And I often like to say, don't abandon your weaknesses altogether because it makes you a part of who you are, all right? And that was basically what they said in the advice, so I didn't want to elaborate on it, all right? They said accept the whole package, all right? Improve upon your weaknesses, but don't get rid of them lock stock. All right, that said, your strengths and weaknesses in the can. I think you get the idea. Let's move on to those born on this day. When we get into those born on this day, something I like to do is focus on figuring out our passions, not just seeing who shares your company. I think it's the perfect opportunity to maybe take some inspiration from what others have accomplished so we can start driving after a purpose or a passion, if you like, all right? Because I think life is all about finding things that are fulfilling to chase after. And I think they mentioned as much for you as well, all right? Uh, that said, I get out in the world and meet a lot of individuals, ask them what they do, and more importantly, if they like it, a lot of times they don't. I think it's just because, you know, they got out of school, right into a job simply to make ends meet. And at the root of it, the fatal flaw had nothing to do with anything they necessarily liked to do. And sometimes it's hard to figure out what we even like to do, let alone a passion. I think it takes time, effort, and work. And at the end of the day, we don't necessarily have, we aren't necessarily willing to carve those things out for those kinds of purposes. All right, we'd rather just relax, rally for the next day, and then the weekend comes and we're changing bed sheets, ostensibly because of that uh, sexual relation with that one unique partner. <laughs> it's to say, let's not get into that, but you get the idea. Because then you're just punching, the, you're rallying yourself to punch the clock and start it all over again. So I think this is the perfect opportunity to start diving in to figuring out our passions and using those who share our company to drive up the inspiration all right so if there's anything i can wish you on your birthday it's to help you start driving after it all right so let's get into it those born on this day and bear with me i'm probably going to mispronounce the lion's share of the names all right here we go vaslov nijinsky a legendary russian dancer choreographer that says hospitalized with schizophrenia at the age of 28 but lived to 60. all right hey, sometimes these things are a little bit down in the dumps so other times we get individuals who we might like not may may not like to know we share a birthday with so uh, Let's just see what else we, we drum up here today. We also have uh, Kemal Atturk, uh, Turkish leader, president and founder of Modern Turkey. We also have Liza Minnelli, the singer, entertainer, film actress, and daughter of Judy Garland, if you didn't know. Gabrielle De Annunzio, an Italian novelist, playwright, poet, and responsible for The Flame of Love, and was also an aviator and a political leader. So here we have an example of somebody who was spreading their energy to various different interests and maybe not necessarily drilling down on one for very long, but still got in the book. So you know what? Don't be afraid to chase them cars, all right? You only have to drill down every once in a while. We also have Jack Kerouac, the beat poet and the writer of On the Road. We also have Edward Albee, a two-time Pulitzer Prize winning playwright responsible for a work by the name of Seascape. We also have Andrew Young, a civil rights leader, a Georgia congressman, UN representative, and an Atlanta mayor. We also have Bishop George Berkeley, uh, an Irish philosopher and writer of Principles of Human Knowledge as well as Theory of Vision. We also have George A. Uh, Delarue, a French film composer, James Taylor, the folk rock singer and songwriter, Al Jarru, a jazz singer, Alberto Juan Torina, a Cuban runner, an Olympic 400, 800 meter gold medalist. We also have Paul Kantner, a singer, songwriter, guitarist of Jefferson Airplane and Starship fame. We also have Walter uh, uh, Shira, the U.S. astronaut and pilot of the Gemini 6 mission. Dale Murphy, a baseball outfielder, National League three-time RBI and two-time home run leader. We also have Norbert Brainin, a uh, British violinist, and it says Amadeus String Quartet Primarius. We also have Daryl Strawberry, the baseball outfielder and rookie of the year. Giovanni Anginelli, an Italian industrialist and the Fiat chairman and brother of Umberto. We also have Annette A. Adams, a lawyer and the first woman U.S. appellate judge of California. Uh, this also says the first woman federal prosecutor. 
Very interesting. And finally, we have C.G. Suits, a physicist and an inventor. All right, very interesting today. We had the whole gamut of individuals, astronauts, politicians, artists, dancers, filmmakers. Hey, you know what? Uh, very, uh, but also folks that struggled mentally, all right? So be mindful of as much. They really drilled down on that for you. So don't be afraid to start working brick by brick, like they said. So a very interesting smorgasbord. And I would say there's still room for somebody else to get in there, even though the book's been already published. So you know what I'm saying in a metaphorical sense. That having been said, hey, I know it's a big ass tall order to try to take inspiration from other people's accomplishments. But you know what? If I can just uh, get you to start thinking about it, then... Uh, that's that that's what i'm hoping for all right and if i wish like i said if i wish for anything for you on your birthday it's that all right so driving after a, a passion find something fulfilling that said i butchered some of the names so let's make up for it on my side of things it's not done in malice it's just hooked on phonics isn't the best tool for pronouncing names that said that essentially rounds out your birthday reading all right except to say your season is winter your sign once again is pisces of the pisces three periods specifically and your quality and element is mutable water and this has been march 12th the day of the great leap and you know i was thinking about the hat and the ladder there that might speak to the psychological aspect too all right the uh the uh, the material into the metaphysical there Who's to say? You know, and a lot of times you can't make connotations for as much, but hey, maybe that works, all right? That said, this has been Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you Stelfers. I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description, right above a personal message I like to put together for the birthday boys and girls, ladies and gents. So if you're interested in checking out the message, have at it. And if you're interested in picking up the book, well, you know, use the link. Save the hassle up and type it in, in the browser there and support the channel in the bargain, which I appreciate. Makes an excellent coffee table book. Help you do the lion's share of the ice breaking if you hold a party or some such. And you know what? That's how it was introduced into my life. And I've been all the better for it, I think. Uh, that said, book having been related, not altogether all too important. Because what's important around these here parts, like I said at the top, wishing you a happy birthday. So once more happy birthday all right and for everybody else who joined us you know, to celebrate i hope hey, i hope you enjoyed yourselves and you took something of value even though it wasn't your birthday and i hope to see you over for your birthday reading all right that said before i take us out lest i forget your daily numbers all right get out there let the universe show you it's with you on your path see taste touch smell into it even just a little bit of the magic and I think you'll see why I brought it up for you, right? I hope for you that you see and taste, touch, and intuit it, or hear, whatever the case may happen to be. You metaphysically sense it, perhaps, all right? Maybe you drum up some danger, too. Who's to say? Getting on a bus could be a dangerous prospect. You never know. Switchblade Tom Petty might be on now, I doubt it. But, you know, somebody else with a switchblade cleaning their nails. That said, uh, once again, happy birthday, all right? Uh, it's been a, uh, what do I like to say? Yeah. It's been... A pleasure to share your time with you. And uh, you know what? I want to thank you for as much. Uh, <laughs> so, so it's also been a privilege uh, to share your birthday and celebrate it with you. All right. So once again, take care of yourselves and happy birthday.